Right. Hi, today we're going to assemble a vacuum pot out of this uh, cooking cooking pot. So if this is something for stabilizing wood. So if this is something you're interested in, don't change the dial. Hi y'all, Mike Peace of Mike Peace Wood Turning and I'm here to share my passion for wood turning to, with tips, tricks, and techniques to help you make a become a better wood turner. If this is something you're interested in, you know the drill. Subscribe. So today I have a guest with me, Jerry Jerry Chandler. Jerry's a, our videographer at Chattahoochee Wood Turner and a club officer and a and a skilled wood turner and he's come over here to, uh, he was interested in stabilizing so he's here to help me with this project welcome Jerry thank you appreciate being here this ought to be a real good adventure for us okay all right I want to give you kind of a, an overview of some of these fittings uh, some of these you probably I don't know if I'll have enough detail here to help you figure to give you the exact part numbers or anything but I'll give you a pretty good idea of, of what we're trying to do and then we're going to go through the process connecting these so the trick is I want this uh, vacuum pot to share the pump with my vacuum chuck so I need a quick disconnect and that's what this is it's called a brass NPT national pipe thread uh, coupler and so this is going to go on the vacuum chuck side now to adapt this to the piece of hose that's coming off which looks something similar to this I'm going to have this threaded coupler here and then I'm going to have this piece on it and then that's going to go inside this polypropylene hose um, I already had enough hose but if you were if you were starting with this you can buy this propylene hose from uh, Home Development Center uh, probably 25 feet for uh, six or seven dollars um, so that's that side on the other two uh, fixtures on the rotary adapter that goes inside my um, the headstock for my vacuum chuck I need to for that hose that's coming off I need to have an adapter like like this like this with a barb and this polypropylene the inside is 3 8 so I needed a 3 8 inch barb and it'll friction fit in here then I'm gonna have this uh, quick disconnect or, or quick quick connect uh, coupler with matching female threads and then I'm gonna have this on both of those pipes the one that comes off of my uh, rotary adapter for my uh, vacuum chuck and then one that's gonna come off of the uh, the pressure pot now there are keep in mind there are different sizes for this I actually bought the wrong the wrong size there's a there's a uh, quarter inch and then there's a, a three eight three eighths and I bought the wrong size uh, I noticed when I picked this one up I, at, at Walmart you can actually uh, it's got a little cutout so you can uh, see if it, it it fits and clearly this one doesn't doesn't fit like to, to match it up and that that can kind of help you choose it but I, I, I guess what I'm suggesting when you go buy these things if you're not familiar with them keep an open mind maybe take a little piece of pipe and always carry a couple of the fittings that you're trying to uh, cross match some of these a couple of these uh, I believe I got from Walmart and I believe I might have picked up one or two of these off Amazon so here's my gas uh, 523 vacuum pump and this is a real common pump used for vacuum chucks and it's the same one that uh, an earlier video, I'll have a link to that earlier video at the end of this video, that my friend John was using in his shop. And when I realized that he was using the same pump that I could use my vacuum chucking without having to buy a new pump. In addition, I didn't have to buy uh, any of these fittings, which is the vacuum gauge, uh, the relief valve. When you open this up and it allows air in here. And this collects a little dust from the shop uh, and filters it uh, and the hose from the pump comes through here and it connects to this rotary adapter that goes into into the uh, hand wheel on my uh, headstock for for vacuum chucking so what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this hose here and I'm going to put a quick disconnect right here. So let's let's go ahead and do that. I'm just going to take a knife and carefully cut this polypropylene 
hose. Okay, just set this aside for just a second. All right, so I've got this barb, this 3 8 inch barb. So I'm going to just stick this in here and might not have hurt to heated this up a little bit with a uh, a heat gun, but I'm just going to force it in. It is a very tight fit. And it's so tight, you don't need to worry about hose clamps. Because uh, those barbs seal this real well. Now I've got this connection from this national pipe thread, which is slightly tapered into this coupler. Probably to make sure we've got a good fitting, I'm going to use some uh, a little band of uh, Teflon tape. I'm not sure if this Teflon hose is really necessary, but it's there. Let's see if it's... Well, now let me get another. I'll tighten these fi fixtures up later. Go get a wrench. So now for this, uh, the quick uh, disconnect coupler, I need to do the sim same thing, put a little piece of uh, Teflon on it. Now you want to make sure that your Teflon is not extending out the front because you don't want pieces of it to, to get pulled inside the pipe and, and get inside your pump. So now we're going to thread this. And again, I'll come back with a wrench to tighten it up. So now we now I've got that handy to connect to either my vacuum chuck or the stabilization pot. So now I need to put a barb on the other end of this. So I've got the same kind of barb, 3 8 inch barb with this, uh, I forget what size this thing is, that, the adapter, and I'm just going to press down right here. Right on. All right, I'm going to take a heat gun and I'm going to go ahead and heat this up, soften it just a little bit to make that connection, and then we'll come back to that later. So we're just going to heat this up just a little bit. Don't want to get carried away with it. Oh yeah, that, that's the trick. Okay, now we've got that. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, put another Teflon wrap here and thread this on. And then anytime I, I use the uh, my chuck, all I'll have to do is slip this thing in to make that connection or to release it. So now for the next uh, next pipe connection, let me uh, let me take a quick break for that. All right, I'm going to cut a lucite uh, or acrylic uh, top for for the vacuum vacuum pot. So let me set that aside. So. Uh, this is a little less than, or about 3 8 inch, and I used a large compass to draw a circle. And you, know, you could cut this out with a saber saw, you could cut it out with a, uh, a scroll saw, but I'm going to use my, my band saw. Let me put on my ear protection and, and the vacuum. I ran a dust collector. Probably a way you could use a jig, but most of them I've seen require drilling a hole, and I'm not going to drill a hole in the middle because I'm going to have my fitting off to the side. So I just drew the circle in freehand, and it doesn't have to be perfect. All right, I'm going to use this 1 16th inch closed cell uh, foam, commonly called fun foam. They use it to make uh, little animals out of, but it's you can get this for about a dollar a sheet from a craft store like Michael's or Hobby Lobby, and I'm 
I drew the uh, big donut here, and this is going to be the seal on the acrylic against the top of the pot. And this is the same kind of material I use for a gasket on my vacuum chucks. Uh, so it, this, should, this should make a very nice tight uh, seal. And I'll just use probably some spray adhesive to actually uh, fasten this to that acrylic. We'll just cut along the dotted line on the inside. Because the top needs to be clear, so when you use it doing the stabilizing process, uh, you're going to control uh, the, the suction and how much air, because if you're not careful, you can get a lot of air and some bubbling in the stabilizing fluid that will splash on the top. So you want to be able to see the action so you know when to uh, reduce your, your vacuum to control that process. Okay, I'm going to spray this. Uh, I followed the instructions. We're going to spray about six to eight inches away from the edge with this uh, spray adhesive. Uh, and so I'm going to do the outside on the donut. Then I'm going to remove that and, and I'm going to spray again on the outer surface so I get a double bond. So I'm going to use that, that waste to keep from spraying the middle because I don't want to get any on that acrylic that, that would have to be cleaned up. And of course, uh, turn it upside down to clean the hose. So now I'm going to lift this up and flip this over. Now I'm going to lay this down on a flat surface with a little bit of weight on it while and let it dry for about 10 minutes. Okay, here's the completed lid assembly. Uh, I put some weight on here on a flat surface to, till the glue dried. I drilled a hole that exactly uh, was this, just about the perfect size of this, uh, this barb and I actually twisted it on slowly with a drill bit so it, it, it fit very snug uh, and then it's sealed up against the plastic and then it's being held in place only by this tube. Now, how long this will last, I don't know. I'm obviously going to have to be careful with this fitting, but we'll see if that works. And now I've got the quick disconnect and I'm going to come over here and hook it on. And we're going to run a test vacuum. So, sitting at zero, I have no air coming into this thing it's on maximum actually I'm gonna, I'm gonna slowly build up pressure and see what happens make sure I've got this sealed against it all right here we go now I'm going to start increasing the vacuum it's up to 15 20, 24, engine start and lift off of the Atlas Centaur rocket with the Gozel weather satellite. The same kind of rocket lifted. Looks like I'm pegging the needle at 24 uh, inches of mercury. So uh, I'm going to. I wonder if how much suction I can see that it's pulling it in just a little bit. Makes me want to put on my safety glasses. I think it'll be all right. I think we're ready to uh, start stabilizing. Now that I got the stabilization pot uh, made, I'm looking around for some scraps of wood to give it a. Uh, a trial run. I've, I've got some uh, Jerry brought over some spalted uh, soft uh, maple. We're going to see how that works. So stay tuned for the next episode. Hope you enjoyed this one. If you did, subscribe. Welcome any comments you you might have. This is not the only way to make a vacuum pot. It's the way I did it. Y'all stay safe, stay sharp. Y'all come back here. <laughs>